What's up, Tech Herders? So I come to you on this Saturday evening and I ask, how do you retro? Some of us like to emulate. Some of us are into Amigas or Macintosh or old Apple computers. Some of my friends across the pond might like those speckies. But I'm in a Commodore 64, well, I guess I could say Commodore type of mood this weekend. And so I have some of my collection out. And I wanted to share with you guys how I retro on a daily basis. I made some backups of Attack of the Petsky Robots earlier. And right now, can I find it? No, I don't have the disc. There's a very rare uh, Commodore demo. It's like an in-store demo that would run in a sales, you know, a computer sales shop. And when I tried to load the disc earlier today, it didn't work anymore. But luckily, I have it backed up. So we have Draw Copy doing its thing and making a new backup of that very special software. Maybe in a couple minutes, I'll show it. Running on the Commodore 64. I kind of want to talk about how I found some or most of this equipment, types of prices that I even paid. Because, you know, you find your hardware all over the place. Uh, that Commodore 128 over there, I got that from a good friend of mine. And he went through it and made sure that it was fully repaired. So I paid a little bit more of a premium for that device. However, it's worked like a top since I've got it two years ago. And, and it's an awesome machine that I can rely on. Um, this bread bin here, I have two bread bins, but this bread bin here, I found for 50 bucks, um, just a person on Craigslist or I believe what, it, you know, one of the apps offer up. And then I got another collection of about 300 discs. And that's been immensely cool to have not only boxed software, um, but all different kinds of software. This is a quick load. It's not like a fast load cartridge, but it's a quick load software. The game Hacker, Tetris, a really killer Tetris too. Zork 3, and just many, many games. I've had to go through and make sure they were all good copies and make new ones if not. Even in one of my, um, in one of my founds, I found brand new sealed discs. That was pretty cool. Um... I found real retro joysticks that are, you know, from the 80s. They're not new. What are some things that I added on uh, for, like, current solutions and how do I get discs in and out? I do have a 1541 drive down there, putting away. Uh, however, this is a great purchase for a Commodore. Uh, it's an SD to IEC card that allows you to use an SD card. So that's very helpful. Over here, I have a Wi-Fi modem. That's really cool for connecting to bulletin boards. Uh, actually, in that other find that I got, the guy had another, that's, that's another Wi-Fi modem, the same as in that 3D printed case, but uh, it's not in a case. It's really neat to see from people's collections. This is an old disc cleaner. It's not gonna be good anymore, but let me see if I can't get it out. It shows when this guy cleaned his 1541 drive. December 23rd, 1984, October 14th. <laughs> so uh, cleaning the disc drive there. That's the other thing about these collections is um, so many of the discs are so, so old that they're just brittle and don't work. So all these discs um, are not working. These are not functional. Uh, Ace Rahal Challenge, Hess Games, Magic Carpet, Rockford, and Music. None of those worked, so I've been steadily going through all of the discs. All of the box discs seem to work. But let me get this thing put up, and I'm just going to play a couple demos, and uh, I'm going to try to get that C64 demo going for you guys before we're done. Oh, I know I can do it. I, I have the D64 over here. Uh, so I'll load uh, that demo up here. I want to show it to you guys. It was really neat. And it was supposed to be in, you know, computer stores that were selling uh, Commodore 64s. So I'll catch you in a second when that's all set up.
Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. The 1541 just stopped. So let's fire up the bread bin and see if this demo is working now. I got my load eight in there. Come on. Looks like it's gonna go guys. So this is an old Technicom demo uh, that was used in, like I said, computer stores. And the guy would get there in the morning He'd type in his info, he'd push play, and it would demo the Commodore 64 all day long. All right, well, our store name is TechHeart. We put spaces, okay. We do that. Uh-oh, wait a minute. There we go. All right, store name TechHeart. Commodore Price. $666. Time of day, let's just call it uh, 12.30. But you know, you could set your time at your store. Run continuously. For maximum effect, it is recommended that the audio output be connected to a high quality sound system, which we are not tonight. We're on an iPhone. Killer. Yes. Yeah, so this one would run. Um, I actually uploaded this to archive.org. I'll put the link in the description. And how cool is that? Yeah. So let me turn that down. And I'm going to discuss with you guys a couple more cool things here. We were talking earlier about where do you find hardware, retro hardware. And I stated that I found some stuff on OfferUp and that I knew a friend where I got the 128 over there. I got the monitor in a different deal. And that was on OfferUp. I think the monitor I paid, oh gosh, I think I paid up. I paid 150 for it. It's a 1084S. The very best place to find retro hardware are your Facebook groups, your Discord channels, and communities, Reddit communities, Facebook groups. I'm gonna put a bunch of my favorites in the description below, and you could join up. There you'll find people that aren't trying to gouge money for these old machines, and you can still find a fair deal. Another thing that I've heard is if you attend any of the VCF events, that they are very good for finding fair prices also. If you go on the groups, they'll at least tell you what things should cost. And I'm not positive, but I think a bread bin, you know, it should be no more than 150 bucks. I got this old uh, TV for 60 bucks, something really cheap. Some things that are important that you don't always think about are, like I said, those discs. If you ever find somebody that has an old collection of discs, they normally never care about them, but they're important to have. Another important thing are these books, like this one's Learn Basic Programming in 14 Days. Um, but also I got all the Commodore books, you know, for the monitor and the uh, uh, word machine and name machine. These two are the most important in my opinion, the Commodore 64 Programmer's Guide and the User's Guide. You know, these books, uh, they don't make them like this. Look, the guy that must have owned it before me highlighted all the important parts. These books are, are really needed. I have an extra user's guide if anybody needs one. So yeah, you wanna find a community and when you find other people that are into this stuff, that's where you get the air quotes deals from. For example, this breadboard right here is getting mailed out after this video for free. It's going to one of my really good friends in these online communities that I'm a member of. So you know, you can even get deals like that. Um, now I'm going to fire up just some other stuff to show you some cool applications, demos, and software. Yeah. Mayhem in Monsterland, baby! Let's get it! There we go. Let's start in Jellyland. Killer game.
it switches from sad to happy statuses throughout the play. I haven't played this in a long time. That's mayhem, guys. Really great game. So let's get talking about these retro systems. Check the description below and find some cool communities to join. Know that it doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. There are machines out there. Just ask and uh, rock and roll, guys. Just a little bit of Commodore 64 fun tonight. Hope y'all had an awesome weekend, and I'll catch up with you soon. Tech Hardo!